The cosmic speed limit, the speed of light, is so small and powerless compared to a galaxy that any aspirations for galactic exploration or even just communication seem impossible. So in this video, we will look into traveling faster than the supposed cosmic limit to accelerate space exploration and what lies ahead once we've figured out this obstacle. First, we must look into why the speed of light is so ineffective. One of the many reasons is that light moves more slowly through different transparent mediums, such as air, glass, or water. So why does light slow down in the first place when it encounters different mediums? Consider the following illustration. When a moving object that is cruising along collides with a denser material, it will become enmeshed. This is what happens to light. Understanding how electromagnetic waves, like light, travel across space will help us better grasp this example. Light waves are essentially magnetic and electric fields, perpendicular and in phase with each other, and these two fields are inextricably linked. Light can travel as fast as the universe will allow it to, which isn't fast enough on a galactic scale for us, yet still manages to lose its effectiveness when it encounters a material like water or air. So how does that happen? Well, once the light wave enters a different medium, such as water, the wave will exert a force on the electrons in the water's atoms and molecules. This force on the electrons causes them to move, and moving electrons produce their own oscillating electric fields, causing both the light wave and electric field to interact with each other. The sum of this wave interaction causes the light wave to essentially slow down, when considering how fast light moves through space, several calculated journeys have revealed the speed of light to be inefficient. It is discouraging to know that it would take us around 2.5 million years to reach Andromeda, the nearest other galaxy to us. It will also take just over four years to get to the nearest star, Alpha Centauri, if we're even capable of traveling at such speeds which shows us how long it takes light to travel across solar systems and galaxies. NASA's Voyager 1 space probe, traveling at 10 miles per second, or 17 kilometers per second, would reach this star in about 77,000 years. When considering the energy required to accelerate something to the speed of light, the more mass the object will gain, and so the more energy you will need to accelerate it resulting in infinite energy required. But even if you could accelerate this fast, it would be extremely dangerous for you and the ship. You see, the vacuum of space isn't entirely empty. Each cubic meter in space contains about 0.3 atoms. So if you attempted to accelerate to even just 20% of the speed of light, each of those atoms would turn into a bullet your ship will experience multiple explosions on the surface, each such triggered by a single heavy atom like oxygen. For the lighter atoms such as hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, it will pierce through the surface of the ship. And if you were crazy enough to accelerate to half the speed of light, for any tiny dust particles floating in space, the collision will be equivalent to that of a thermonuclear bomb being detonated on your ship. So what other methods are there of space travel? Well, first, the warping of space. This can be achieved by the Alcubierre warp drive. In his 1994 mathematical theory, Miguel Alcubierre employed two points in space-time to show the expansion and contraction of space fabric. This renowned hypothetical Alcubierre drive, inspired by Star Trek, was offered as a means of taking us beyond the cosmic speed limit. According to Alcubierre's idea, a warp in space-time can be used to propel an object past the speed of light. According to this hypothesis, Alcubierre drives warp the space around an object so that it can travel faster than light in ordinary space while still obeying all the laws of physics. The spaceship would effectively be motionless when the space in front of it is traveling faster than light, rather than the spaceship itself exceeding the speed of light. It was hypothesized that in order to operate, this warp drive would need to be powered by negative energy or exotic matter, 
meaning we would need some form of negative gravity, making it essentially impossible to do so with the understanding of physics we have today. Note that negative matter is not antimatter. Antimatter does not have negative gravity, it has positive gravity. It's just like matter, except it has the opposite charge. So an antimatter proton would have a negative charge, and an antimatter electron would have a positive charge. Antimatter does exist, but this anti-gravity negative matter is something completely different. It has never been detected. Imagine something that weighs negative one kilogram. What would that look like? Another issue with this hypothesis is that any planets or stars it passes close to would be harmed by this warp. The energy generated by the warp drive could even be strong enough to create a black hole at its destination. If you thought this was bad enough, quantum phenomena makes this even worse, and our understanding of the quantum world is very little. Meanwhile, Alcubierre's drive was developed in the lack of one, using general relativity alone. Finazzi demonstrated in 2009 that the warp drive bubble causes the amount of Hawking radiation inside it to exponentially increase. This isn't only a risk to the crew, the exponential buildup destabilizes the bubble itself. Warp drives are not the only objects affected by these quantum issues. Because these quantum effects are disregarded by everyday activities, wormholes, another fictitious FTL system, have also been questioned as potentially unstable. Until we have figured out quantum gravity, we can't definitively say if Valcubier drives are going to become reality. Every time an FTL system is present, a time machine that can induce paradoxes in time is also present. Since there is no good way to answer issues like the grandfather paradox, physicists dislike them since they call into question the foundations of our reality. FTL systems can break and create paradoxes if they are used carelessly. Stephen Hawking offered the most widely recognized solution to Hawking's famous phrenology protection conjecture. Temporal paradoxes cannot occur because of how the natural laws are set up. Let's hope he's right. Once we have overcome these challenges, what lies ahead is truly fascinating. Because of the advancements that have allowed humanity to better understand FTL travel, space exploration will be far more rapid than before. By doing so, the universe will become more accessible to us, giving us the chance to investigate distant galaxies and other cosmic mysteries. We will be able to utilize the resources of distant planets and perhaps build long-term communities or research centers there, which will help us comprehend the cosmos and how we fit within it. Exoplanet exploration will also give humanity access to a broader range of opportunities. We'll go near and far in the universe and learn the mysteries of the worlds beyond our own. We can anticipate even more findings as we further our exploration. It's time to take action and explore the possibilities of traveling faster than the speed of light. For many years, scientists have theorized that travel at such speeds is impossible, but recent breakthroughs have only brought us closer to achieving this dream. We have seen the possibilities we could achieve with the Alcubierre warp drive and the potential it offers on FTL travel. What's your take on this topic? Do you think we can overcome these challenges? Let us know your thoughts on this topic. Share this video with those it will interest, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for joining us in this exhilarating journey. See you in the next adventure.